Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Friday, September 20th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. All right, here we go. Here are the games for Friday, Major League Baseball. First up, we'll go to Wrigley Field for an afternoon contest between the Nationals and the Cubs. We got Trevor Williams and Jamison Tyone on the mound. Trevor Williams' is first start back at the Major League level since May 30th. And we know before the injury, he was one of the more profitable pitchers in baseball. Had a 5-0 record with a 2.22 ERA. Not really known for missing a lot of bats and earned strikeouts, but he's able to keep the ball on the ground. He only gave up one home run on the road in 35 road innings this season. And he gets outs, and I think he does so here. I mean, he, his rehab starts were solid. I think he can go four or five decent innings in this game, and the Nationals can get the Jameson tie on for a couple of runs. And I like the Nationals to win this game on the money line, but you could take the plus one and a half runs uh, if you, on the run line if you want, but give me Nationals here. Next up, we see the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Cincinnati Reds. We got Mitch Keller and Nick Martinez on the mound. I got to give credit to Nick Martinez. He's been pitching really well as a starter recently. He's faced some tough lineups as well in the Astros, Braves, and Twins. And the last three games all against those three teams were all victories for the Reds. And uh, he's given up one earned run or fewer in those last three starts and four of his last five. Uh, he pitched against these Pirates back on August 25th. Went three innings of one earned run baseball. Only had one strikeout, gave up five base hits. It really wasn't his best performance. But, I mean, Mitch Keller on the other side has really struggled in the second half of the year. And the Pirates are losing a lot of his games. They've lost his last four starts. I got to go with the Pittsburgh, the Cincinnati Reds in this one over the Pirates on the money line. Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Jose Barrios for Toronto, no official starter for Tampa Bay. You know, Jose Barrios had that really tough month of July with an ERA above six. But in August and September, he's been much, much better. I mean, in August, he had 39 and two-thirds, 2.5 ERA. And then so far this month, he's got 13 innings, only two runs given up with a 1.38 ERA. And two wins for the Blue Jays. And by the way, they've won his last seven starts now. A lot of those were, I mean, all of those were by more than one run. And a lot of those were blowout wins. We saw 10 to 3, 15 nothing, 7 to 2. So they, you know, they're backing them up offensively. He's pitching well himself. The Blue Jays in the last month are number one in baseball in OPS and ISO against right handed pitching. We'll see if there's a righty starter in, in this game for Tampa Bay. But nonetheless, I still like the Blue Jays in this game on the money line. Next up, the Detroit Tigers taking on the Baltimore Orioles. Kyder Montero and Corbin Burns are your starters. Burt, Burns definitely had a bounce-back start in that last game against these Tigers. Seven innings of shutout baseball with seven strikeouts to go with it. But Montero also faced the Orioles in that series in a different game. And the Tigers won that game 4-2 to two after a five-inning shutout performance from Montero. So Montero's put really well recently. The Tigers have won three of his last five games. The Tigers have really improved offensively against right handed pitching. Their bullpen in the last month has been excellent, and the most important month of the year as you know they try to make a playoff push. You know, the, the bullpen ERA in this month of September is sub two right now, so I gotta go with the Tigers here plus the one and a half runs. I think they've been playing the better baseball recently, and I think the value definitely lies with Detroit in this game. Next up, we'll go to the NL East as the Marlins take on the Braves. We got Charlie Morton and Valente Bellozo as the starters. To me, it's a lopsided pitching matchup in favor of Atlanta. And we know the Braves have a ton to play for right now in the NL wildcard race. Morton's been pitching well down the stretch this year, giving up three earned runs or fewer in his last five starts. Good strikeout numbers to go with it. Now, the Braves aren't always backing them up offensively, but I do think against Bayozo and the Marlins bullpen, Atlanta should be able to put up some runs here, win this game, and cover the run line. So give me Atlanta in this one. I'm going to lay the one and a half runs. Next up, we'll go to Fenway Park as the Twins take on the Red Sox. David Festa and Richard Fitz are your starters. Fitz so far in his first two games at the Major League level, 10 and two-thirds, no earned runs. He's got a zero ERA, but he only has four strikeouts. He has given up four walks. When you look at the expected numbers so far, a 3.68 expected ERA, 5.67 XFIP. I do expect regression going forward against a Twins team with everything to play for. And a decent option, David Festa on the other side. I like the Twins in this one. I know Festa hasn't been as sharp as a starter recently, but I do think he is a better option in this game. He's been strong on the road, better on the road this season in a target field. Give me the Twins in this one on the money line. 
Next up, the Philadelphia Phillies and the New York Mets. Another game where we have some playoff implications. The Mets in the mix in the National League wild card as well. And we got the same matchup we saw last week between these teams where it was Peterson and Sanchez. 2-1 to one final score in favor of Philadelphia in that game. And I like the Phillies in this game as well. I mean, Peterson pitched very well, but so did Sanchez. They went toe-to-toe in a pitcher's duel in that ball game. Well, the Mets' bullpen's definitely improved in the last month, but when you look at this Phillies lineup, they've hit lefty so well, not just the last 30 days, but overall this season. And I do think Sanchez is the better starting pitching option, maybe slightly, but still the better option. So give me the Phillies in this one at a great price on the money line. Next up is Seattle Mariners taking on the Texas Rangers. We got Emerson Hancock and Jacob DeGrom on the mound. Now, DeGrom pitched well in his season debut against these Mariners. He went three and two-thirds of four strikeout baseball with no earned runs and no walks. He did give up four base hits, but I think he's a much better option in this game. Even though I don't love this Rangers bullpen or the Rangers lineup against right-handed pitching, I think the Rangers have a big-time advantage in the first five innings, so I'm going to go with the Rangers in the first five. I think the Mariners, if it's a close game late, could be able to find a victory. Certainly playing for a lot right now as they're in the AL wildcard race but give me the Rangers in the first five innings on the money line. Next up, the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Houston Astros. We're going to see Tyler Anderson and Justin Verlander on the mound. And this was a game we saw last week between these two starting pitchers, a game I thought was going to be pretty high scoring. It was 5-3 to three to final, so it went under the total. But Tyler Anderson did struggle on that one, giving up four earned runs, a home run, and three walks in only five innings. And the Astros won that game and covered the run line. It was a bounce-back start for Verlander, but still wasn't you know, an amazing outing. I mean, five innings, two walks, four hits, two runs, only two strikeouts. I think the Angels could find a couple of runs on them, but I think by the end of the game, the Astros still win this game and cover the run line. I think they have the much better lineup, the much better bullpen, and the slightly better starting pitching option. So lean towards the over, but I'll take the Astros on the run line. Next up, we'll go to Milwaukee as the Diamondbacks take on the Brewers. No official starter for Milwaukee, but Zach Gallon should be going for Arizona. I like the Diamondbacks in this game. Gallon's definitely improved his game recently. He pitched okay against the Brewers last week. It was at Chase Field. Five innings, seven strikeouts is what you want to see, but the three runs and a homer, not so great. It was still a Diamondbacks win. They've won four of his last five. We'll have to see who the official starter is for Milwaukee, but right now a lean for me to the Diamondbacks on the money line. Next up, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the Kansas City Royals. We're going to see Mason Black and Michael Waka on the mound. You know, we've talked about how the Giants have been a very power-dependent lineup recently. They, their strikeout rate's through the roof, and their OPS isn't the best, but their isolated power number against righties has been solid. The problem for them in this game is while it's at Kauffman Stadium, you're facing Michael Waka, who's only given up two home runs in his last five starts combined. He's in pretty good form right now, giving up two earned runs or less in four of his last five starts. His strikeout numbers are starting to pick it up as well. Seven plus Ks in three of his last four games. I think he's a much better option in this one. The Royals are in desperation mode as they try to hold on in the AL wild card. Facing Mason Black, who's got an ERA above seven and an ERA above 10 on the road. I got to go with KC on the money line in this one. Next up, the Cleveland Guardians and the St. Louis Cardinals. Ben Lively and Kyle Gibson are your projected starters. Now, Ben Lively, we've talked about the regression concerns here in the second half of the season. He did pitch well against Tampa Bay in that last start, but only two strikeouts. And it was against a pretty weak lineup. And I know the Cardinals have not been a great offense this year, but I do think they've improved in the second half. I think they can get to Lively for a couple of runs. And I also think the Guardians can get to Gibson, who has struggled at Bush Stadium this season. His last game against Toronto, while he only gave up one earned run, he gave up four unearned runs and a home run, three walks with only one strikeout to go with it. So he's been rather inconsistent recently. I think that the Guardians can certainly get to him for a few runs, a tough lineup right now. So give me the over in Cleveland, St. Louis. Next up, the Chicago White Sox taking on the San Diego Padres. Garrett Crochet and Joe Musgrove are your starters. I like the opposite in this one. I like the under. Maybe you go under in the first five innings if you don't trust that White Sox bullpen. But for me, Musgrove, while his ERA is above four on the season, he's really just had a couple of really bad outings that have kind of tanked that ERA. Outside of those, he's pitched really well. I mean, he had a nice bounce-back start in his last game against San Francisco. Six innings, eight strikeouts, no earned runs, no walks, in an 8-0 Padres win. So I think Musgrove pitches well against the worst lineup in baseball. On the flip side, Garrett Crochet, a lefty, facing a Padres team that has not been great against left-handed pitching in September. We saw them face Frommer Valdez earlier in the, in, uh, in the week. And while they won that game, they didn't do much of anything against Fromber. So I think Crochet could go four or five decent innings in this one. We go under the first first five innings and under in the full game as well. 
Next up, the New York Yankees and the Oakland Athletics. Garrett Cole and JT Ginn are your starters. Yeah, Garrett Cole was not his best in that last start against the Boston Red Sox, but they have really been his kryptonite since he joined the Yankees. We know Rafael Devers has such great numbers against him now. He didn't really pitch to Devers in that one. He walked him and hit him, but nonetheless, Boston's been a tough team for Cole to face, and he's faced them a lot this year. He has not pitched well against them this year. I think he bounces back, though, against an Oakland A's team that I like the top half of that lineup. I don't love the bottom half, and I think Cole, who has been excellent on the road this season with a sub-3 ERA, can bounce back, put together a quality start, and if the Yankees bats back him up and they win this game and cover the run line, Ginn was okay in his first couple outings, but now we're starting to see the regression. His last nine innings against the Tigers and the White Sox, not lineups anywhere near as strong as the Yankees. He's given up 17 hits, six earned runs, and a couple of home runs. So give me the Yanks in this one, land the run line. Next up, we see the Rockies and the Dodgers, the final game for the Friday card in Major League Baseball. Kyle Freeland and Walker Bueller are your starters. Now, we know the Rockies have been miserable on the road this year, but the key for me in this one is the fact that they were able to get the day off on Thursday after they wrapped up their home series with the Diamondbacks. They get the day off on Thursday. I think that's going to help them quite a bit in at least this first game and honestly throughout this three-game series. And we also look at the Rockies in their last couple of road games in the road series against the Braves, Brewers, and Tigers. They were much more competitive in those games. I mean, the Tigers series didn't really go their way, but they won the final game of that series. They took the series in Milwaukee as a big-time dog in most of those games, and they also took down Reynaldo Lopez in the final game of that Braves series as another sizable dog. We see him as a sizable dog in this one, but for me, Kyle Freeland's been the much better option on, on, the, on the mound recently, and you know his last game, seven innings, three runs against the Cubs. The Rockies have won three of his last four starts, one of those being a road game against Milwaukee. Walker Bueller, we're still waiting for him to put together consistent efforts. He's not been good this season. He's not been good at Dodger Stadium with an ERA above 6.5. Even his last game against the Braves, which is a quality start, he still had five walks given up in that ball game, so his control's still been off. I got to roll with the Colorado Rockies plus the one and a half runs in this one on the run line. And that's it. Those are the games for Friday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Put those baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Manelli. Good luck.